welcome to the Morning Word Show. My name is Joseph, and I am your local Twitch poet. Actually, correction, it is today the Morning Word's question mark stream. And you might be wondering, why is it a string of question marks and not just the Morning Word Show? Well, after some pondering, I realized that I was not comfortable with the more name Morning Word Show anymore. The good name is a good name to start because it's like, well, I need to, you know, slap something on here. Boom. Morning Word Show exists. And it, it's kind of about morning words. It's a regular recurring show. My email is opening up for some reason. I never asked for this. What's going on here? Oh, goodness. Leave me email. Leave me. Good. Um, I'm going to just check to make sure that my stream is running. Still paranoid after everything that happened. Um, but I realized that while Morning Word Show was good to start, this, you know, in yesterday's talking and rambling and conversation, this place is meant to be a presence. I, I don't know if presence is the right word, though. It's meant to be that... Uh, it meant, meant to be a space where you can rest in work. At least I hope that's what it can be. I mean, obviously, it's a space where I chatter, and you can choose to listen. It's a space where the sound of the typewriter is definitely very present. And so that can also provide a meditative element, like the sound of an old office. Which, even though it's not really an evolutionary thing, it's kind of like a social evolutionary thing. To be conditioned to be used to typewriter sounds. And it's only recently that computer sounds have replaced those. So the sound of work of writing, uh, the sound of melodic verse, any of these things are things that I want to bring, but I really like the idea of bringing them in a sort of presence or aura, not necessarily a, uh, let me see here. Ooh, it looks like we are good on the stream, but not necessarily a show. Like a show's about me. The thing is, I don't want this to be about want this to be about the place, our landing space, our, our, our home. And where I, oh goodness, and where I kind of go through poetry. So that is, I think, the, the change I want to make. But the question is, what? Um, what a morning, says Twitchy or Alex. I'm here, though. I get you. This morning was kind of like waking up in a fog for me, too. Um, there are days that I, I actually get myself together and I'm like all there and ready to go. And there are other days where it's like, ugh. you know, everything is just kind of scattered about. I was just talking to you, Alex, about how I am changing the name of the morning word show into something different. But I need a word that it's almost like the Joe Rogan experience. So the Joe Rogan experience, that word describes the fact that he's not just running a podcast, he's not just running a show, and it's not really even just about him. It's about you, when you come there, you get an experience. It's a certain type of aura and feeling. And so the Morning Words experience rolls right off the tongue, but unfortunately, I'm not into being the copied hack. So <laughs> I need something different. Something that's more literary, I guess, for a better, well, lack of a better term. So that's what I'm doing with the name change. Uh, last night's... Um, Meeting stream was killer. I caught the tail end of it, and then I rewatched the whole thing as I was working on stuff. That was a lot of fun. Well, the best thing to do when one does not know what to do is to write about it. For me, at least. And I'm going to bring back our music. You're right. Wait, that's right. This morning is supposed to be a request show. I totally forgot. Oh, goodness gracious. What a... Ah! Um, Twitcher Alex says, Whatever you do, this format is wonderful. I think you carve a nice niche of people who like to come together and chill out, listen, and write poetry. It's a very neat little space you've created. Um, spoiler alert, my, my vision, and I haven't, 
It's kind of like secondary because I really don't have a lot of time to throw at this right now. And it's just nice for me to just kind of use it as a discipline tool, but also to kind of create a little bit of a space. Um, is I I envision it being like a like a Bob Ross sense, like Bob Ross effect when it comes to poetry. So Bob Ross would come on there and I haven't seen enough Bob Ross and that's part of the problem because I need to actually review it. But Bob Ross would go and do his show. He'd go on there and he would show people how to do what he was doing. And obviously Bob Ross does it best and he does it, he did it like once a week and it was just crazy. Like he did like every week. But he would explain to people how he was doing what he was doing. And I've been integrating a little bit of that. But believe it or not, little secret, I'm also learning how to improve my craft enough. Um, I'm good at coming up with stuff on the spot, but there's a level of having it all together. Like that would be, you know, like uh, it, I could probably, if I spent an hour on a poem, I could really make it into a, a great poem, both in the immediate and the long term. But when I spend five minutes on a poem, it's kind of hard to do that. The moment I can kind of trim down that time frame, and I think that the stuff I'm working on is still really good, but the moment I can trim down that time frame, it'll be really good. So I'm working with a friend of mine who actually studied poetry, and I'm learning how to take, you know, kind of think about it from a more academic standpoint, just a little bit, just enough to be able to bring in some few elements. But this morning is supposed to be a request show. Wednesdays and Saturdays are supposed to be request shows. I totally forgot. If you have any requests, Twitch or Alex, drop it in the chat. I will write a poem about literally anything in the universe. Anything. Um, I'm really excited, actually, for, for any possible requests. But if not, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to kind of just throw some words out on the typewriter to... Um, get some 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 thoughts going in terms of changing the name of the show and yeah i i think that it, it's it's a really a balancing game for me because my my main thing the thing that you know i do this more for fun but it's still important like it's important for me it's for fun and for my own self-discipline so it would take a lot to invest to really branch this out and like a lot of planning time and things like that so i'm, I'm still it's incur it's i don't want to even say incremental improvements it's that i'm just having fun with the um with the with the show um twitch or alex makes some suggestions trying to structure the stream to include more features segments honestly i'd like to see you just whip out something from the heart whatever is coming to you naturally this morning should be pretty interesting naturally to me this morning Absolutely. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. And it is one of those things that a little planning goes a long way. But then when you plan more, it exponentially decreases in effect. It seems to be like, like it's like, you plan a little bit and not like rigorous planning, but just kind of like, Hey, this is what I'm going to do this week. And like, it's awesome because you're like, Oh, I set up, a, I did this this week. And that's something that I should probably be doing. But then after that, it's like, all right, I'm, I did this and I'm going to do it in this way. And I'm going to do this. And I'm going to do it that way. At that point, you're spending more time for less because you're already kind of set up what you were doing. I don't know if that makes sense. I'm rambling. Let's just type. Well, thank you so much, Twitch Hero Alex. I probably will take you up on that and DM you um, ideas as I kind of bring them together. Um, I had a real good run going for a while, um, like in streams 40 to 50, and then it, it fell off. And I think that's part of the reason why I want to figure out, for lack of a better word, the Bob Ross effect here in terms of just having something that people really do feel like they want to come back to because it was people enjoyed it and they really got a lot out of it and then they were like well this is it you know like i've come here several times in a row um but yeah i really do appreciate that
Twitch here, Alex says, I see what you mean now. In reference to kind of people coming and then going, like, yeah, that's, um, or like, or kind of make doing the Bob Ross effect type of thing. And I think that's what I need some more time to be able to learn how to articulate the concepts and then be able to demonstrate them. And then when I can do that, and then it'll be more Bob Rossian, I think that's when I'll be really on to something. But it's funny because the perfect metaphor for what I'm doing, and it's actually one that it's just so perfect that I should write the poem, um, which I'll do one of these days, is. Um, is a comparison to a fiddler to a, a violinist. Um, I didn't ever study poetry specifically. I, st I studied a little bit of poetry in high school and I loved it. And I wrote a ton and I read a bit when I was in college. And so I learned a lot of the tricks to be able to do it well on the fly, to be able to spend hours just writing verse after verse after verse after verse, line, line, line. I have book notebooks just filled with lines. And so that taught me structure, rhyme structure. It taught me kind of to listen for what sounds good. And then I started doing this, which even accelerated that. And then um, I had my first meeting with a friend of mine who does writing consultation and studied writing. And so he, he st actually has seen things from behind the publishing side. So it's spe specific to poetry. What makes poetry publishable and good? And when we talk, I'm like, well, I do something kind of like this. And then he explains the technical aspects of it. And that's when I realized it's like a fiddler learning how to be a violinist. Because violinist reads the music. The fiddler just knows what sounds good. But when you actually take a fiddler and you really listen closely to what the fiddler's doing, the fiddler is putting on a show and probably a good amount of his notes are, like when he's playing, his notes are crap. Like he's, he's masking the imperfections and people are fine with that. And he's fine with that, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a fiddler um, because there's something very exciting about seeing a guy just stand up and whip out a bow and violin and just shred. But the thing is, is if he wants to be able to learn how to play Bach, Mozart, and Haydn on, you know, on demand, play on demand, he needs to be able to learn how to read music, how to understand those chord progressions, maybe a little stronger technique in his fingers. And so I'm going through that very, dare I say, annoying stage. <laughs> I don't want to have to learn that. I like fiddling. <laughs> but I know that I will grow by doing this.
Secure Alex says, definitely take inspiration, but don't copy. Make sure whatever you're doing is comfortable and fun that will show to your viewers. If you don't like how you adapted to, to what inspired you, that will show in your work. If you're not enjoying the whole process of each segment, you're going to incorporate. Yes, must whatever you are going to incorporate must be sustainable to you and your broadcast. That's absolutely true. Um, and he wrote a lot more here on the the philosophy of incorporation. And I agree. Um, yeah, it's it's it really is a dance. It's such a dance. That's why I, I frankly don't give Akira enough credit for being able to dance the way he does in that way, because. You know, you 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 want to. Anytime you bring something in, you're choosing for and you're choosing against. Um, and also, when you choose not to bring something in, you're choosing for and choosing against. Like I think that there was a point, and it's a learning curve. And I'm frankly very happy to fail in this aspect. Like I'm, I really, I don't, I never, ex I don't expect the first hundred, two hundred shows to be anything super spectacular where there's hundreds of people watching but it's more so that i'm using that time to be able to grow and be patient with myself try new things learn what comes of it um follow what works but like i remember like around show 50 there was a point where i realized hey these people are not going to be just hanging on for the same thing over and over again and i not that i didn't do anything with that i think i did try this or that to kind of change things up but I also lacked the resources to say what what will keep these people hooked. But that's a learning curve. Then you know, okay, I have to incorporate something, but it's not this something, it's something different. Let's try this. And so when, when the momentum eventually builds again, I'm sure there will be something that comes to the surface as our uh, nautical poem is feeling. This was originally going to be a metaphor for the show, but it turned into something way different. I like it.
home then. This one I took my time with. Alrighty. So this is a Oh look, we have some uh we have some spam in the chat. Want to become famous. Buy followers, primes, and views. Nah, I'm gonna pass. Alright. So this poem is entitled Show Something More. Dive deeper than yourself and lift from the trench of truth the newest discoveries. An outpouring, a flow state of foresight under the surface. Bring the thoughtless me here. Dwell in the gap where a buoyant soul suspends itself. Weightless in the water, sensing the place where my suspension and sinking are linking. Temporal to eternal, limit to infinite, and mind to meaning, the submarine leaving, the stop so fleeting. Show something more. A poem about diving into the sea that is yourself. All the way through. This was supposed to be Show Something More, the title, and this happens sometimes, was supposed to be jumping into, hey, let's talk about the show. Let's talk about the fact that I don't know what this is called now. Um, and thank you so much, Twitcher, Alex. I really appreciate your, your kind words. Um, and then it just went into the sea metaphor. My, and, and symbolism, I should say, so, you know, kind of generally the symbolism. My writing friend that's teaching me has taught me to, is teaching me to be more concrete in my symbolism and more specific in my symbolism. Twitcher Alex also says he was, def he was definitely a learning curve and a stumbling process that must occur before you consider yourself and your broadcast finally sufficient. Yeah, and, and I think that it really, I mean, Akira's, Akira jumped in and he had it from the start. That was something that was very plainly evident, which was lucky, but it really wasn't from him that I kind of learned this, but it was the Gary V's Wine Library TV. Like, if you look at Gary V's old episodes of Wine Library TV. What is it? It's a guy with a camera pointed at his face with a couple bottles of wine and a plain background. It was very bare bones. He said that probably nobody was watching during for at least the first several hundred episodes or something like that. Like, it didn't really become big until he had been doing it consistently. Um. Oh, there we go. Akira. I didn't even see that. Thanks for pointing it out. Three years ago, the stream started as him talking to a webcam at his desk, answering questions from the chat. We had maybe 20 viewers out of the entire community show up. Then he started doing occasional interview and started playing music on the stream. And now three years later, the streams are back rebanded as meaning streams. And almost exclusively music. That is a little bit of history that I didn't even know. Um, because I only know him from the meaning streams. I didn't know that he's been pursuing this for so long. I, re I remember seeing some of... Um, he did a, uh, a lo-fi rain stream. Um, yeah, I... What he's doing is just awesome. Um... But yeah, exactly. So it's what about trying and seeing what works. And that's the great thing about this is this is, believe it or not, like it's almost like I have gigs on gigs on gigs. So like, or like, I shouldn't say gigs on gigs, but like side hustles on side hustles on side hustles, like side hustles all the way down. <laughs> I, I basically, I'm doing all freelancing. And so I try to do freelancing poetry full time. And then I have like another job part time that kind of keeps me going. But this is like the side hustle to my poetry side hustle that then became full time is doing the stream. So it's like, OK, we're practicing at this. And and the thing is, is if, if I stream forever like this, 
one person, maybe no people, and I'm just sitting here with my typewriter writing some poetry, that's practice, that's work. It's always still a good for me. I am definitely devoted to expanding the stream. So I think that Gary Vee's stream is a great example of something that when it's kept up every day or regularly, and you, sl and you just keep pushing at the regular, even when you're doing kind of the same thing, but just tweaking it a little bit different, eventually it just catches like it's a light, you know? And more people find out every day about what I'm doing and more people find out every day about what Kier's doing. So I really do think that what he's doing with his streams is a good, another good example. Um, Yeah, there was plenty of fine tuning to get to this point, and that's just something that everyone has to do. No one has the same format they developed three years ago. And I think that that is key, is that something's got to change here. And I'm not going to force a change on it. Like, I'm not going to wear a clown nose and go crazy. But, like, over time, this stream does have to change. And I'm sure that it will change in a direction where it's supposed to go. So, it's interesting. And I really do appreciate the background on Akira's history because it is true that this will, you know, that he's, he, I should probably spend some time going through his backlog and kind of seeing what he went through in terms of trying to grow things and what worked, what didn't work for him. Uh, it's so interesting to kind of be hopping on the bandwagon on this, like when everything was going on with COVID. But I knew that doing something regularly in the morning being creating something regularly in the morning was going to be so helpful to me as a creator. So it really is so inspirational what he's done. And on that, I am going to close it out for today. I want to thank you, Twitch or Alex, for being part of the stream today and for your for really sharing and helping me talk out what I'm feeling with the stream because Every moment, every time I do that, everything counts a little more and everything makes it a little better. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the poem. If you're so inclined and you like the poem, you can always uh, private message me your address and I can send it to you via the mail. Or you can ask for a photo and I can send a photo, whatever you feel comfortable doing. I thank you again for regulating the vibes on the Akira streams, which for anybody that is watching this on the replay, uh, you can, I always recommend Akira the Dawn. His music is what backs my show. Uh, please consider watching his streams and please consider tuning into him. He's got a lot of good stuff. And Twitchy or Alex is the hero that regulates the vibes there. Um, regulates the chat vibes. Thank you again so much. And thank you again. Um, yeah, and I would definitely... Um, would love to to learn to be able to uh to see some of those old clips from the Eskakira streams. We'll we'll chat in the uh in the Discord about it. All right. Thank you again. You all have a wonderful day.